Resonance effects are practically everywhere in electronic circuits. Every time we have storage elements, like inductors and capacitors, energy can be transferred between them. This can lead to effects that can make the life of an electrical engineer really difficult. In this video, we want to take a look at what is the root of resonances, how they cause problems, and how we can use them for our own advantage. Capacitors and inductors were one of the first electrical components to be developed and used in electronic circuits. The first inductors were built by Michael Faraday in the 1830s, while the first capacitors were used in 1745. Already in 1853, the British physicist William Thomson formulated an equation to describe the resonance frequency of an LC circuit. But what do we mean by the term resonance? Let's have a short recap of the capacitor and the inductor. Both elements are able to store energy. The capacitor can store it between its plates in form of an electric field. The inductor, on the other hand, stores energy in its magnetic field. How much energy can be stored depends on the value of the parts and the applied voltage or current. Our well-known passive linear elements, resistor, inductor and capacitor, have a specific AC behavior. If an alternating sine voltage is applied to a resistor, a current flows through it, which is in phase to the applied voltage. With an inductor or a capacitor, the current is 90 degrees out of phase. In case of the capacitor, the current is leading, for the inductor it is lagging. This behavior can be explained by the standard equations for our components. The current flowing through the capacitor is the time derivative of the applied voltage. So, if we apply a sine voltage, the current will be a cosine. For the inductor, the voltage is the time derivative of the flowing current. So, if we apply a sine current, the voltage will be a cosine. Therefore, the current is either leading or lagging by 90 degrees. Another property is the frequency dependency of our elements, at least for the capacitor and the inductor. This can be seen in the formulas for their impedance. The impedance of the capacitor is 1 over omega times c. Since omega is in the denominator, the impedance decreases with higher frequencies. In other words, the capacitor becomes more and more invisible for high frequency signals. For the inductor, the impedance is calculated by omega times L. Therefore, its impedance rises with frequency. The phase shift of the two elements is indicated by the imaginary unit J. An ideal imaginary impedance is called reactance. In case of ideal components, the reactance of a capacitor and an inductor have different signs. After this short revision, let's take a look what happens if we connect both elements to an AC source, either in series or in parallel. Let's start with the series connection. In a series connection, the total impedance is the sum of the individual impedances. Since both elements have an imaginary impedance, the sum of them is also imaginary. We can write the total impedance in the following way. To investigate the behavior of the circuit, let's apply a frequency sweep to the circuit. At low frequencies, the impedance of the inductor is very small, which makes sense since it's basically a simple piece of wire. We can neglect its impedance in comparison to the impedance of the capacitor. Therefore, the whole circuit acts like a capacitor and subsequently the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees. With rising frequency, the impedance of the capacitor decreases while the impedance of the inductor increases. In this ideal consideration, the total impedance will decrease until it becomes zero. Both impedances now have exactly the same value, but due to the different sign, they cancel each other out. This frequency point is called resonance frequency of the circuit. Remember, no impedance would mean an infinitely high current, which is only possible for our ideal devices. 
If the frequency is increased further, the impedance of the inductor will prevail. The total impedance rises again because of the inductor's impedance and the whole circuit now acts like an inductor. The current is now lagging behind the voltage by 90 degrees. Notice that at the resonance frequency, the phase shift between current and voltage jumps by 180 degrees. An infinite current and the jumping phase do not sound like a circuit we can build in reality. And of course, in reality, there is no such thing like an ideal capacitor or inductor. The behavior of coils is often more nasty than that of capacitors. In our case, it is mostly the inductor that causes the non-ideal behavior. An inductor is made out of copper wire with an ohmic resistance. We can model this resistance in series with our other two components. Of course, the capacitor also has some non-ideal properties, for example a small series resistance and a high parallel resistance. But to simplify our considerations, we will neglect them here. What we get is an RLC series connection. Now let's take a look what changes. The complete impedance for this circuit can be calculated by the following formula. For low and for high frequencies, not much changes. The resistor is negligible, so either the inductor or the capacitor dominates and the phase shift is plus or minus 90 degrees. But around the resonance frequency a lot changes. Since at this point the impedance of the capacitor and the inductor cancel each other out, the voltage source only sees the impedance of the resistor. The maximum current is now determined by the resistance. And of course a resistor generates no phase shift. Current and voltage are perfectly in phase. If we start at the resonance frequency and move towards higher frequencies, the circuit becomes more and more inductive and the phase turns towards plus 90 degrees. In the other direction, the circuit becomes more and more capacitive until the phase reaches minus 90 degrees. A remarkable thing happens around the resonance frequency. While we have a certain voltage at the input, which is determined by the ohmic resistance, we can measure a higher voltage at the inductor and the capacitor. This is called resonance voltage and it is possible because the two voltages are shifted by plus and minus 90 degrees compared to the current. This behavior makes this circuit ideal for use as a bandpass filter. If the voltage at the resistor is the output voltage, we get a damped signal that gets smaller and smaller the further we move away from the resonance frequency because the reactance is rising. At the resonance frequency, the reactance becomes zero and the input signal appears unfiltered at the output. This is an example of how we can benefit from resonances, but sometimes we cannot avoid unintentional resonance circuits. Take a real capacitor for example. Every capacitor needs a connection for soldering. This connection will always form a small loop for an AC current flowing in and out of the capacitor. This loop causes a small inductance with a small series resistance, which, together with the capacitor, behaves like a series resonance circuit. This means that at a certain frequency, the impedance of our capacitor becomes minimal, after which the impedance will rise again because of the small inductance. If we need a low impedance for a wide frequency range, we can connect capacitors with different mechanical size in parallel. As a rule of thumb, the larger the mechanical size of a capacitor, the larger is its inductance. Sometimes it is really helpful to imagine electrical processes with an analogy. In the case of our resonance circuits, we can imagine an electrical inductor as a spring with a certain spring constant, and the capacitor as a weight with a specific mass. The electrical resistance is represented by the mechanical losses. The mechanical analogy of the AC voltage source is a motor with an eccentric disk. This equivalent circuit is called force current analogy, or in short, FI analogy. As the name says, the basic idea is to represent the electrical current with the mechanical force. 
it is also possible to represent the electrical voltage by the mechanical force, which is known as Fu analogy. This is the mechanical representation of our series resonance circuit. Let's start with a low frequency signal, or in the mechanical world, a slow rotating motor. The spring will move up and down, but will almost not deform due to the slow movement. This can be compared with the small voltage drop over the inductor. The weight, however, moves a lot, just like the voltage drop over the capacitor. If we increase the frequency, we can see that, just like in our electrical circuit, we can find the resonance point where the spring and the weight move very energetically. And just like the voltage overshoot in an electrical circuit, we get a mechanical overshoot at our spring mass system. At very high frequencies, the spring will stretch and compress with the frequency of the drive, but the weight will stand still. This corresponds to the electrical behavior of the inductor, where a high voltage drop occurs at high frequencies. The interesting thing about this comparison is not only the vividness, but also that the mathematics behind the mechanical and electrical domain is basically the same, even if it sometimes looks a bit different. Take a look at this table, which lists the electrical quantities and their mechanical equivalents. If you deduce the most important formulas of the respective signs from it, you will find amazing similarities. Pause and take a closer look at this table. Although expressed differently, the mathematics in both domains remain the same. Of course, it is also possible to arrange our electrical components in parallel, and we will also get a resonance phenomenon, the so-called parallel resonance or current resonance. Here, the total impedance for very low frequencies is practically zero since the inductor acts basically as a piece of wire and its impedance is very small. For very high frequencies we get the same result, but this time the impedance of the capacitor is very small. Somewhere in between we will again get a frequency where the impedance of capacitor and inductor cancel each other out. From the input we will only see the resistor and the real current will flow. This is the resonance point of the parallel circuit. It is also the maximum of the impedance. Between the inductor and the capacitor will flow a current, which is higher than the input current. Therefore, this resonance effect is sometimes called current resonance. We can use this resonance to design a circuit that does exactly the opposite of the series connection. Instead of filtering out one single frequency, we can block a specific frequency. This circuit is called bandstop filter. In real-world inductors, we can observe several parallel and serious resonances in the impedance spectrum. This is because of capacitive coupling between the different windings. The effect is most noticeable in the upper frequency range, where, due to the geometry of the coil, smallest capacitances and inductances will cause many resonances. So, we see that resonance circuits can have both good and bad aspects for a circuit designer. On the one hand, they allow us to build special filters, about which we have made videos by the way. The link is in the video description. On the other hand, resonances often occur unwanted and make our lives difficult. Whether desired or unwanted, the principle remains the same for all resonance phenomena. At the resonance frequency of two energy storage elements, the impedances of both elements cancel each other out, resulting in either voltage overshoot for serious resonances or current overshoot for parallel resonances. A practically unavoidable ohmic resistance always limits the overshoot. We have also seen that the mathematically background in the mechanical and electrical world is basically the same when it comes to resonances even if it sometimes looks a little bit different. Incidentally, this fact is often exploited in loudspeaker construction when different resonance effects in the mechanical, electrical and acoustic domain act simultaneously. So you can see, the world of resonances is an exciting topic in the most diverse areas of technology. 
I'm Christoph with the Institute of Electronics. We hope you've learned something today, but anyways, thanks for watching. For the interested viewer, we highly recommend The Arts of Electronics by Horowitz and Hill, and for our German-speaking viewers, Elektronische Schaltungstechnik, written by members of our institute.